everyone, Penny Song, Brave and Unbroken, and it is April Child Abuse Prevention Month and Sexual Assault Awareness Month 2022. I can't even believe we are actually saying 2022. It's been COVID with what seems forever. <laughs> and um, so many still, twos. <laughs> no, and we're still on Zoom doing this remotely um, to still continue to be safe, but we're so thankful you're here. I'm here with Margaret Holzer. Margaret, how are you? I am good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for being here. And why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, My name is Margaret Holzer. I am the um, national spokesperson for the National Children's Advocacy Center and all around advocate um, for the prevention of child sexual abuse and awareness of child sexual abuse. So happy to be here and talking about April and getting geared up for it. Getting geared up. And uh, for those who don't know, we go full speed ahead in April and come May, we were just talking about this. We sleep as much as possible. <laughs> yes. May is the time where we rest. Yeah. Lots of resting. So Margaret, what does April mean to you? Um, I mean, I think again, obviously it's child abuse awareness month and April to me is the time when I, I post every day on social media, <laughs> which I am really bad about the rest of the year. It's like my one month and then you don't see me for again for 11 months. Um, But yeah, I think it's just really the time to, to draw people's attention to what's kind of going on and say, Hey, like, these are the the amazing people out there doing work in this field. And this is what they're doing. Um, But mostly these are the resources, right? Like, unfortunately, there are so many of us, you know, we are not a small population. Um, you know, but at the same time, I think there's strength in numbers. And so it's letting people know that if they have been abused, they're not alone and, and just providing general awareness, education, and, uh, like I said, shining a spotlight on all the amazing organizations and people that are out there doing, you know, all this work. Awesome. Thank you. And can you give us a little bit about your background? Like, why is this work so important to you? Yes. So I was sexually abused as a child and I actually went through the National Children's Advocacy Center. Um, It is in Huntsville, Alabama in my hometown. So that just happened to be the advocacy center that I went through and um, decided to go back later as an adult and and see what it was that I could do to help and um, eventually became their spokesperson. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, So we talk a lot about prevention. We talk a lot about healing. Um, Something we don't talk a lot about is generational, the cycle of generational abuse, generational trauma. Um, And I think prevention is such a key component to preventing the cycle from continuing on and on. So can you talk a little bit about that and and what the National um, Children's Advocacy Center does for families and supporting them and helping them through these situations? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so they help, and, and this is all advocacy centers. So there's, um, I don't know the exact numbers, but there's like a thousand CACs um, across the country and um, a handful internationally. And so what an advocacy center does is it, um, it basically works with children that are 18 years old and under. You can probably hear my cat howling in the background. She's trying to get my attention because I'm ignoring her clearly while I'm doing this Zoom. So I'm sure she'll come join us in a minute, but I apologize for the howling. Um, But anyway, so what they do is they, um, they do go out into the community and do a lot of prevention work. But um, more importantly, what advocacy centers do is they're on the reactive side. So when a child has been abused, you, you call the police, if you, you know, presumably you don't know what to do. And they're going to um, take you or tell you to go to the local advocacy center. And hopefully there is one local. There's a good chance that there probably is. And so you're going to go to that advocacy center and they're going to provide all of the various services. And, and the model was basically that they put everything under one roof. So they have your, your DA, your police department, um, your forensic interviewer, if you have to, you know, have a rape kit and go um, get a medical exam, right? Like they have a psychologist, like they have all these different departments so that instead of having to go seek them out and find all these different pieces, it's all just provided for you and it's all under one roof. And so that's kind of the, the number one thing that they provide. 
And it's not just for the child. It's for, um, oh yeah, perfect. Show the picture. Um, yeah. And so it's also for the family as well. And so that was actually a huge resource in my own family. I remember, um, talking to my mom about this and, and, you know, she said what a relief it was for her, you know, going, going to the advocate center and having them kind of take her aside and say, okay, these are the steps. This is what's going to happen next. This is who you're going to talk to, you know, and, and this is essentially how you're going to put your family's life back together. So yes, first and foremost, obviously they're, they're working with the people that have been abused and the children. Um, but they also are stepping in and, and they're helping the parents and kind of giving them guidelines and going, this is how, how you also help your child. Cause you know, we're not there 24 hours a day and this is how you, you know, you move on with your lives. Great. And in your family situation in, in utilizing the CAC, what are some of the key things that you remember in the supports that you and your family received that were just so vital in your healing? Yeah. I mean, I think the number one thing was I was believed, right? Like I was very, very lucky in the fact that I was believed by my parents and the first person that I told a, a friend of mine. Um, but also going to the advocacy center, you know, the, the, the every single person there, I never at any point felt like, you know, all these adults, you know, think I'm lying or, or they don't believe what I'm saying. Right. It was just a very supportive environment. I immediately felt believed. I immediately felt heard. I immediately felt safe, you know, and I think that right off the bat was important. Um, I also started getting counseling, you know, immediately. And so I was very lucky in the fact that I, I was able to start getting that help right away. I say right away. I mean, there was a, a four year gap from the time my abuse ended to the time I told anybody, but at least as right away as it could be, you know, from the time that I told people. And so I think getting that help and, and immediately having it reinforced that this was not my fault, immediately having it reinforced that I was believed and that, you know, I was believed that I mattered. It wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. And just kind of having those things told to me and shown to me, like right from the get go, um, from multiple people all in, in you know, in, in, in different angles. Um, I think that had a huge impact because I, I can honestly say I never did believe it was my fault, you know? And I think that's because, you know, they got to me so quickly. And so it, it just never even entered my brain that, that I thought, you know, that somehow I deserved it or that somehow I thought that I did something to make it happen. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for that. I know in our area in, in Western Washington, there's one in Olympia Monarch. We have Dawson's place up North. Um, there's one in Bellingham, one in Pierce County, one in King County. So there's quite a few and oh, um, centers. Hi, Kitty. Sorry to interrupt. No, <laughs> like, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, we knew that is she, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she would be over in the camera before long. Mm -hmm. um, but these centers are just trying to do the best that they can for the whole community and the backlog and the, the resources are slim. And so really supporting them in your, in your communities is really, really vital. So to everyone out there, look them up, cac.org. Yes. And if you go to the National Children's Advocacy Center, they have a, um, a, fine, a fine CAC by state. So you can click on the state that you're in. And then of course it you know, takes you to your community. So yeah. Great, great. Thanks for that. All right. So what else does April bring for you? What are some of the things that you're doing to, besides social media, um, <laughs> to help with prevention, to help with awareness, to get your story out there, to draw attention and help the CACs? Yeah. Um, well, one thing about April is that if you were driving around in your community, you might notice pinwheels um, and pinwheel gardens and, and people's yards or at different businesses. Um, and I, I know that's kind of a big thing. And, and April is always when people do it. I have a pinwheel garden, um, courtesy of a CAC, small talk, um, CAC uh, donated a pinwheel garden. And so to me, and I was very excited about that. So I have that in my front yard supporting them. Um, but you'll see these, these pinwheel gardens and they represent a couple different things. One, um, a lot of times the individual pinwheels represent a child that has been abused. And so sometimes advocacy centers will put them out in mass just to demonstrate, you know, we served 400 kids this year, right? And then they'll put 400, you know, pinwheels out because it, it shows people just kind of the massive amounts and the volumes of, of what they're doing. And that's sad, but 
overall, I think the pinwheels are supposed to represent hope, right? It's pretty, it's shiny, it spins, they're blue, you know, and, and then, and when you, you kind of plant them in these, these, these pretty ways. And I think it, at least for me, I look at that and I, I just, I think it shows what hope can look like, if that makes sense. And so I think that's kind of the idea behind it is it's, yes, it's a letting people know, you know, this does go on. Um, but there is help. There are people that care, right? So if you're driving around and you see some blue pinwheels, you know, drive by my house, you'll see some. Um, but that's kind of what that means. So that's one thing about April. Um, but also, I mean, I, I know one of the things that I like to do is, um, and this kind of started on a whim, but I I wear a different t-shirt every day of the month um, for a different organization. Um, a lot of them are CACs, um, but I have a couple that are from um, rape crisis clinics, um, are just different organizations that, that work in the, the sexual abuse, sexual trauma world. And um, it kind of started off just because I had gone to a, a handful of speaking engagements, you know, and, and sometimes they would give you like a little goodie bag or a cup or a t-shirt or something with their logo on it. And then, you know, after a few years, I, I had five or six shirts, you know, and so I, I started wearing them and taking pictures and posting those pictures, you know, um, in the month of April. And then I had an organization start reaching out to me and they're like, oh my gosh, can we send you a shirt? And I was like, yes, I would love that. Um, so I don't have 30 shirts yet, but I'm getting pretty close. I think I have like 23, something like that. So I'm, I'm getting pretty close. So, um, but yeah, awesome. so I like to, to wear my shirts and, uh, advocate for the different organizations out there and yeah. That's bring, awesome. bring attention. Well, I know in our state, if you go to the state Capitol, the lawn is full of pinwheels. Yes. Um, and then also at, um, our local juvenile delinquent um, facility. I don't think that's really what it's called anymore, but, um, they do the same thing. So it's pretty neat to see their support of this or of the organization and of the, the cause. Um, it's pretty phenomenal to see that out there. So well, Margaret, the two, the two CAC, sorry to interrupt, the two CACs you five. mentioned earlier, Dawson's Place and um, Monarch. Which other one, yes, um, they do it as well. And so, you know, there's, there's definitely other CACs around the area. And I think a couple of the local hospitals um, sometimes will do it because sometimes CACs are, sometimes they partner with local hospitals. Yeah. And so, you know, they might, they might be located in the hospital, but also they might partner because that might be where the, um, like medical examination, for example, takes place. And so, you know, sometimes you'll go to hospitals and they'll have a little, a little garden as well. Yep. For sure. I know the Tacoma one is, is partnered with the hospital too. So yeah. Yeah. Great point. Um, so Margaret, can you share a little bit about some of the speaking engagements that you do or have done in the past? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were talking about being on Zoom. So it, it, it's been kind of a weird two years. Um, you know, I've, I've had a couple of um, in-person speeches recently, but most of them are still on Zoom. So it looks like through the spring, at least, the majority of mine are going to continue to be on Zoom. But um, I'm really excited. I actually just booked a couple of in-person ones for the fall. So cross your fingers that things are, you know, back to normal and, uh, you know, things will, will kind of be live and in person in the fall, but, um, if not, you know, zoom works, we're still getting to talk and, and see people and, and get the message out. But, um, yeah, I would say some of the, the things that I've done, um, again, it's not just advocacy centers. I also have spoken at several rape crisis clinics, um, from time to time I speak at schools, universities, and, you know, just. I, th I think really just any population that, that wants to talk about sexual violence and, and prevention and, and what to be on the lookout for. I think that's some of it. So it's, you know, depending on who you're speaking with, sometimes obviously you're, you're at a fundraiser or right versus a conference where you're speaking with professionals in the field, right? So the messaging is, is sometimes a little bit different, but, you know, the general idea is obviously going to be that education, prevention, awareness. I mean, that's, that's always what you're talking about, regardless of who your audience is and, and, and your exact messaging. Yeah, most definitely. Well, thanks for that, Margaret. And tomorrow is April 1st. Yes. And who knows when we're going to launch this, but we're going to talk about it anyway. So yes. April 1st is wear what day? Wear blue. Wear blue day. 
and that's to kick off the month. And so we're asking all of you, if you, you probably not, you're not going to hear this before April 1st, but wear blue any day in April. It's true. It's important. It really is true. You can wear blue any day. Um, here, let me pull up my little calendar because there's a couple of other days where you get to wear fun colors. Um, I want to say April 5th, if I recall. Yes. April 5th is where teal oh, yes. for, um, sexual assault. And then, um, April 27th is denim day. So you can wear denim, but also I usually just wear blue on top. And then I, I mean, denim's blue, but then I wear blue jeans. <laughs> so you can wear blue and denim. Um, so those are the days, April 1st, blue, April 5th, teal, and right. April 27th is denim. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, Margaret, anything um, you'd like to share with the group before we close out this session? Um, I think that's all I have, but I would love for people to one, watch this, but more importantly, um, give us feedback and ask some questions. And then that way we know what you guys want us to talk about and would know what you want us to answer questions for. So if anybody has any questions, um, even if it's not something that you want to write on a public forum, um, feel free to message myself or Penny on Facebook. You know, you can send us a private message and ask us a question. And we will address it and not necessarily mention your name unless you want your name mentioned. Um, but yeah, we're happy to, to answer questions and, you know, say, you know, somebody asked this about whatever, but um, that kind of gives us some direction and, and just knowing what people want to know. That's perfect. Cause we'll do several of these this month. So we would love to yes. hear your topics. Indeed. Indeed. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in until next time. Thanks so much, Penny and Psalm at Brave and Unbroken with Margaret Holzer. Awesome. We'll catch you next time.